business aviation operators may be eligible for a temporary exemption from certain requirements under the FAA's Pilot Records Database. From the National Business Aviation Association, this is a special edition of Flight Plan. I'm Rob Finfrock with your trusted source for business aviation news and information. Launched in May 2021, the FAA's Pilot Records Database is an electronic repository for information about pilots flying for commercial operations. Flight departments were required to begin submitting pilot information to the database as of September 8th of last year. But certain capabilities of the database aren't expected to be fully functional until the end of 2022. That poses a challenge for larger operations that may have dozens or even hundreds of records to submit. NBAA recently asked the FAA for a temporary exemption for these operators, and the FAA responded on June 24th. With more, here's Brian Kester, CAM and NBAA's Director of Flight Operations and Regulations. The Pilot Record Database is a congressionally mandated attempt to modernize the Pilot Records Improvement Act. Previously, commercial operators would have to query previous employers for any potential new pilot candidates. Uh, And in that process, they would have to ask all the previous employers from the last five years if they had any records. Uh, And they'd have to ask each of them individually if they had records on training or disciplinary action or termination for reasons due to a pilot or drug and alcohol related issues. So all those things had to be reported to potential new commercial employers for any pilot. And this is intended to streamline that and to improve clarity and accuracy in that process. So everyone should be able to see all the same information. It should be automated, which will expedite the process. So instead of waiting on people to respond to physically mailed queries, it'll now be online and they can do that much more quickly than they would have before, which should expedite the hiring process and the hiring decisions that they need to make. So in that sense, it's a very good program. The new rule is quite comprehensive and has several interim steps along the way in order to bring this database to reality. The first of those steps happened last September, uh, at which time folks were supposed to register for the database. The next interim deadline came in December, at which point in time operators who are hiring new pilot candidates were supposed to start using the database to view FAA records for that pilot candidate. And then June 10th, operators were supposed to start using the database to upload their own training records for new pilots or for any pilots employed in their operation. Unfortunately, things got just a little bit behind schedule in that process. So what happened is in the rulemaking process, the FAA told the industry that they would have two mechanisms for operators to upload information into the database, a manual process, which may work well for small carriers, and then an electronic process for larger carriers or that really any carrier could use. But certainly if a large carrier with a large pilot workforce is going to generate a lot of records, they may want to look into using this electronic process. Unfortunately, that electronic process isn't ready yet. So for those air carriers that have AO25, we were able to secure an exemption to this interim deadline. And it's just a temporary exemption that's supposed to last until that electronic upload mechanism is ready. Also joining me is Jason Maddox, a principal at the law firm of Garofalo Gorlick Heinbach and vice chair of NBAA's Regulatory Issues Advisory Group. So Jason, what specific operations are eligible for these exemptions? The first one, and we think the, the group that would take the most advantage of this, are Part 135 operators who hold uh, OPSPEC A025, as Brian mentioned, which is the OPSPEC for electronic uh, training records. Uh, so that's probably the largest group. And then second to that is Part 91 subpart K operators. So, uh, you know, the, the fractional management companies out there uh, who also hold MSPEC uh, MA025. So the, the management spec, uh, fractional management spec equivalent of uh, the Part 135 operators A025. These are for newly generated records uh, as of of June 10th. This isn't a change to the submission of historic pilot records, which has its own deadline next year. Uh, So we're really talking about records going forward here, uh, which uh, under the, the rule before this exemption, 
uh, was these records would be required to be uh, uploaded to the database within 30 days of, of their generation. Yeah, Jason, great point. The exemption is simply a temporary exemption. It's supposed to get folks through until the electronic upload system is ready. And the FAA has looked at this and said, because it's an electronic upload system, it should be pretty quick to upload historical records at that point once it is functional. So they haven't extended the next interim deadline for uploading historical records dating back to 2015, which is in June of 2023. So then basically once this electronic upload mechanism is ready in January, operators will have about six months to upload records from the last seven years. Again, they'll be able to do that electronically. The FAA doesn't expect that that'll be an issue. More in just a moment after this word from NBAA. NBAA Flight Plan listeners, are you getting recognized for your leadership? NBAA now offers certificates and other credentials in safety, sustainability, and more. Visit nbaa.org to apply today. We're back now with Jason Maddox and Brian Kester and our discussion of recent exemptions issued by the FAA affecting the Pilot Records database. Brian, the FAA granted these exemptions due to the time it's taking to implement the electronic transmission capability. Do you expect we might see additional delays to that process past the end of the year? To the best of our knowledge, we do expect them to be ready at that interim deadline. Uh, The plan is to coordinate with them more closely through the next six months. And operators who plan to use an electronic upload mechanism should be doing the same. They're going to release specs sometime in September is the plan for the API or the interface that will allow them to upload their records. And so at that time, operators need to be paying attention to those specifications and make sure that they can meet those and and use the system that the FAA has designed. So again, uh, expect that interface to happen in about September and really operators should be coordinating closely from then until everything is ready in late December, early January. One important thing to note is obviously this this exemption is limited to members of of NBAA, but also uh, members, if they want to take advantage of the exemption, they have to file a letter of intent in the docket, docket number FAA-2022-0795. Again, any member who wants to take advantage of this exemption has to file a letter of intent in that docket. It's, this is not a self-executing exemption. It just doesn't automatically apply to NBA members. The a member has to take this additional step. And basically that letter needs to state that the, the certificate holder, if it's a 135 operator or the fractional management company, if it's an inspect holder, uh, needs to include in that letter that they intend to exercise the relief granted by that exemption and to affirm their intention that uh, they will comply with the conditions and limitations of of this exemption. So that is an important step before uh, any member can uh, begin using this exemption. Yeah, as Jason mentioned, they do need to file a notice in the docket, a letter of intent, but folks should know that there are letters in there already that you can go in and look and see how others have, have filed that notice, what information they included in their letters. I don't know that it needs to be anything fancy or lengthy just letting the FAA know who they are, what they intend to do. But there are examples in there for them to use if they're creating their own letter. And again, members can find the template for that letter by searching the FAA docket. Jason, what else do NBAA members need to know about the Pilot Records database? You know, from an industry standpoint, I think everybody's in agreement that the Pilot Records database is a good thing. It, it's, it's going to enhance safety uh, once this electronic means of of submitting information and the full database is up and running. It's going to be a very efficient way to go about uh, managing and reviewing these records, which is something 135 operators and MSPEC uh, fractional managers already have to do. It's just in a very much more cumbersome piecemeal way currently. So this this rule and this database are going to be a, a good thing. It's just the problem is that in this interim world that we're living in before uh, FA has this uh, electronic means of, of uploading files in place, uh, we're really talking about this exemption helping uh, efficiency and accuracy. Uh, it's, it's not efficient to have to upload uh, all these records manually as, as they're developed for uh, some of these operators who are, you know, have many planes, many pilots. It's just it's not efficient use of, of their staff time. And also uh, on the accuracy side, anytime you have manual input of data, you increase the likelihood of human error entering the equation. 
And that would essentially defeat the purpose of, of this database is to have this very accurate set of pilot records in place so that uh, employers can review pilot records in a, you know, an efficient manner and make important hiring and safety decisions on who they hire as pilots. So again, it's, 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 this, this exemption wasn't meant to in any way lessen or take away from the importance of this, of this database. It was just a recognition that with, with the FAA's delay in implementing uh, the electronic transfer of records, it was just not an efficient use of members' resources and it just wouldn't uh, support the, the accuracy of the database at this time. Brian? Yeah, the logic behind FAA issuing this exemption is really to enhance clarity when you're entering thousands and thousands of records, even a small percentage of errors suddenly add up and those errors are not the point of of the database. The, the point of the database is to improve accuracy within the record keeping system and transparency within the hiring process. And this exemption will ensure that happens when folks are uploading thousands of records here in six months. It'll ensure that those are accurate. Again, those operators eligible for this exemption should search for docket FAA-2022-0795. And for more information about the requirements of the Pilot Records Database, NBAA members can also visit nbaa.org slash prdguide. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan episodes at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts, including by asking your virtual assistant or connected device. Of course, you can also download Flight Plan directly from nbaa.org. I'm Rob Finfrock. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for a new episode of Flight Plan. Flight Plan.